You don't need a luxury kitchen to prepare gourmet meals. My name is Dennis. I live in a mobile home in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. As I do often, I want to experiment today. Today I want to do some things with butternut squash. I have three of them here, and I want to make a butternut squash soup. I've made that before, but I also want to experiment with risotto. Now the thing with risotto is, for me anyways, it's I enjoy making it more than I enjoy eating it. There just seems to be something lacking in risotto, and I've made different kinds, mushroom risotto and so forth. I'm thinking, what if I were to put in some little cubes of butternut squash into the risotto to give it a little more texture? And then what if I were to saute some chorizo and put that on the side so that guests could take a little fork of their chorizo and mix it in with their risotto? That would give it some spiciness. And also put on the side some butternut squash puree, which is a little bit on the sweet side. It would be soothing to the palate from the chorizo. That might make for a pretty interesting eating experience as well as a good cooking adventure. So that's what I want to work on today. But the first thing I need to do is prep and bake my butternut squash. In the meantime, I'm heating my oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 200 degrees Celsius. So I want to cut down maybe right about there and then carefully cut through. Perfect. That's what I want. Set that aside. And then to peel this, what I usually do is peel it with a knife, but I'm going to try this peeler that I bought because it, so far it has seemed to do very well as far as peeling. This is a very tough vegetable to peel. The skin on this is very difficult. So let me see if I can peel. Oh, look at that. Very nicely that peels through that skin. I have a bowl set aside here for my peels. You could, if you wanted to, save stuff like this. This is trim, put it in the freezer, and when it come, comes time to making vegetable stock, you can make vegetable stock with your trim. When I make vegetable stock, which I especially do when I'm making my pasta vajoli, I usually just go out and buy the vegetables I want in the stock. Gosh, that is doing such a beautiful job. I do not like peeling butternut squash because it's so difficult to peel. And then, let's see, I'm going to cut this bottom section off because I want to just work around this inside rather than scrape those seeds out. I'm just going to cut the seed section off and then cube these up and that one's on the floor for the dog as if I had a dog I don't and then I'm just going to cut this up into slices and then cube these up because I'm going to roast them and I want these to roast up in pieces so sort of like that and then just to show you what I have in mind here, I just kind of chunk these up like so. So I have three of these butternut squashes to peel and cube. Everything now is almost ready to go into the oven. I do want to dress things with olive oil. I'm going to use pure olive oil. The, what I call cooking olive oil. I don't like to use extra virgin olive oil for cooking because it has a low smoke point. It burns easily. I save the extra virgin olive oil as a flavoring oil. I'll put that on a lot of dishes after they've been cooked. But when I'm sauteing or baking, I use pure olive oil because it has a higher smoke point. So here's my bottle of cooking olive oil. I'm gonna remove my stopper there. And just my finger over the end, drizzle olive oil onto these. I have these in lined 
baking pans because that'll make them a little bit easier to clean. And I know they won't stick to the pan this way. These are lined with parchment paper. And you could, if you wanted to, just bake it this way and serve it this way as pieces. If you're going to herb them, garnish them with herbs, don't do it before they go into the oven because at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, 200 Celsius, that'll destroy the flavor of a lot of herbs. So put the herbs on when they come out of the oven. My squash now has gone into the oven. Again, that's a 400 degree Fahrenheit, 200 degree Celsius oven. I'm going to bake that for 45 to 50 minutes. Around 45 minutes, I'll start checking it with a fork. When it's fork tender, it's baked and ready to come out. However, before I put the squash into the oven, I took, up, took out about eight of those chunks because I want to cut these up into little cubes that I want to put inside of my risotto. As I mentioned, the, it'll, I think it'll give the risotto some color and some texture. Now, in the meantime, what I want to do is I, I want to start the prep work to prepare to do the soup because I can make the soup in advance. That heats up well. In fact, I've got a friend coming for dinner tomorrow evening and I'm going to share the soup with her. I think reheated, it'll be even better. The risotto I want to make just before I'm ready to serve because I think the risotto doesn't do well if it's stored and then reheated later on. The rice starts to absorb some of the moisture and it loses its creamy texture. So let's start working on the soup next. I need an onion, a medium sized onion, about 10 ounces, 285 grams at most. This is a large onion. I bought a large one because I'm going to save one quarter of this for making risotto. I'm going to use three quarters of this for my soup. So I want to start by cutting off the stem end first. I've got a pan set aside for my trim. And then I'll cut those roots off because they always get in the way and make a mess. And then I want to cut halfway down through the onion, right down through the root, because that root's going to hold everything together. And as I said, I'm going to reserve a quarter of this from my risotto. Okay, I'll set that aside. If you've seen my other videos, you know I have my own way of cutting onions. I don't like the way the chefs do it on TV. Ann Burrell really makes me nervous. She seems so free and easy with knives. What the chefs do on TV is they cut down through it and then cut toward their fingers. I don't like doing that. I'm going to wipe my knife here. So what I do is, again, cutting in half, working down toward the root. I quarter the onion. And then, not going all the way through, but cutting partway down through the onion, down to the cutting board, because you can't hurt yourself cutting down to the cutting board. Then flip it 90 degrees, cut down through again. I'm not doing a fine chop here because this is not going into my risotto. This is going to go into the soup and I'm going to filter a lot of this out anyways. I'll show you when I get there. I'm actually going to puree what I can and then filter what doesn't puree. So there's my chopped onion. I have to do these other two pieces and then set these aside. I'm heating a large pot here on the stove and I'm going to put a few tablespoons of my cooking olive oil in there and then my chopped onions. And I'm going to saute these over medium high heat until they just start to change color about 10 minutes. One ingredient that I like to use in soups is artichoke hearts, which I'm chopping up coarsely. I don't have to worry about these too much. These are packed in oil, canola oil, water, and distilled vinegar to remove some of that vinegar flavor 
I soaked these in water for a while. And I have here about six ounces or 170 grams total of these artichoke hearts. I picked these up in jars at the warehouse store. They're very inexpensive. They don't add a lot to the soup, but they add something to the soup. You can tell there's something in there that just makes the soup taste that much better. I don't want them to stand out so people go, oh, artichoke. But it just adds a little bit of flavor to the soup. Gives it depth. So there are my chopped artichokes. So there are my onions. They started to brown nicely. I turned the heat down on these. Once the moisture cooks off, they start to brown quickly. So I'm going to add my artichoke hearts. And then cook these for maybe five more minutes just to finish caramelizing those onions. And this step will be finished. My onions look good now. So what I'm going to do, I took my squash out of the oven. It's done. And I'm going to put about two-thirds of this cooked squash in this pot. Next, I'm going to be adding to the pot six cups, which is equivalent to about 1.4 liters of chicken stock. My chicken stock is homemade stock. It's frozen because when I make my own stock, I freeze it in one cup containers, and then when it's frozen, I pop it out of the containers and then store the frozen stock in Ziploc bags. So I'm going to have to add these to the pot, put the lid on, and let them thaw inside the pot, which is fine. There's plenty of time. If you don't have homemade stock or you can't make stock, you can use the chicken broth that they have in the store. It works just as well. Now one thing worth mentioning here is six cups of liquid is a lot, but that's because I like my soup more on the soupy side. If you want a thicker soup, if you like it that way, use less liquid. Then when you grind up the solids, you'll have more pulp compared to liquid, and that'll give you a little bit of a thicker soup. So now I want to start putting my frozen stock in there. This is going to take a while to melt, obviously. So I'm going to turn my heat down to low, put the lid on that, and let that heat melt my stock. So there's my soup now after it has cooked. I let that simmer for about 10 or 15 minutes. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an immersion blender to blend all that up. looks good and yes that's a train going by yes I live near the tracks I want to use a slotted spoon look at that no solids at all beautifully smooth so now I need to adjust this for salt and pepper and then I'm going to be filtering this. I'm, I'm going to strain this because there could be, very likely, there's going to be some fiber in there from the artichoke hearts. And if the, I don't want the texture of fiber in my soup. I want a really smooth soup. Just to make sure there's no fibers in there, I'm going to strain that. Okay, hopefully without making too much of a mess here. I can strain the soup. I'm pushing it through the sieve because I want to see what's going to be left in the bottom. Usually when I do this I find kind of a fibrous material like that. See there's all that fiber. I like to take that out keep that out of my soup. Before I season my soup with salt and pepper, I decided I'm going to go with the optional heavy cream. 
I don't usually do this, but it's been something that I've had written down as an optional ingredient. So I make a cream of butternut squash soup. Let's see if I can do it this way. This is my little tasting bowl. Oh, ho, ho, that's going to need salt. See, I don't use any salt in my stock. And I'm going to grind some black pepper in there. I thought about using white pepper so that I wouldn't have any specks. But I don't think the black pepper is going to be all that bad. What I want to do next is I want to puree my roasted butternut squash. I'm trying to get as much of the prep work done out of the way before I devote myself to my risotto because if you know anything about risotto, once you get started with it, you stay with it for the 15, 20, 25 minutes, whatever it takes to finish it up. So I'm going to do my butternut squash. Quickest, easiest way to do this is to do it in a food processor. So that's what I've got set up here is my food processor and I'm going to be putting my herbs and spices in at the same time. So I'm going to put my butternut squash in there now. A little bit more there. And let's see. I want to put in some freshly ground nutmeg. I have a nutmeg grater here and then a little box that I keep my nutmeg in. I love freshly ground nutmeg. And I'm going to be putting in maybe at the most an eighth of a teaspoon. This is actually a little cheese grater. And when I saw it, I thought, no, that's a perfect nutmeg grater. So there's that. I'm going to put in about an eighth of a teaspoon of paprika. And let's see, I'm going to put in some maple syrup. Buy some of the real maple syrup if you want to do this, rather than the flavored maple syrup. Two tablespoons of maple syrup. I don't know well, how well you can hear that noise outside, but the garbage men are working through and I can't start this process all over again after they've gone by. So there's my maple syrup. Anything else? Yeah, I want to put a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. Not much. Again, about an eighth of a teaspoon. And then I'm going to salt this afterwards. Now, nah, pinch of salt. I think I just know a pinch of salt is going to be enough. I know it's going to need it because there's no salt already. And this is where I cheat. I put a piece of plastic over it. One less thing to wash. It's a guy thing. When I put this on, the plastic will protect this from getting all dirty. Okay. And now I'm ready to process. I'm going to pulse this. got a skillet here on the stove heating and I'm going to put in there about six ounces of pork chorizo. You can use beef chorizo if you'd like. This is going to be a side for my risotto and speaking of my risotto over here I have a small pan in which I'm heating up to a boil 475 milliliters. That's two cups of chicken stock. I'm using my homemade chicken stock. You could use store-bought stock. I'll explain that when I get to the risotto. Let's take a moment to talk about rice. What you need for risotto is a rice that gives off a lot of starch during the cooking process. One of the characteristics of risotto is that it has a very creamy texture. It doesn't have a flaky texture like long grain rice has. It doesn't have a sticky texture like sticky rice. So what you want to buy is 
typically here in the USA anyways, what you want to buy is arboreal. That's the most common rice. It's a short grain rice. It has the right kind of starch. There are other rices that the Italians use for making risotto, but what you're most likely to see in the store is arboreal rice. It's a little expensive compared to the long grain rice, but it makes excellent risotto. Don't use long grain rice because it's just not going to give you that creamy texture. It doesn't have the starch in it necessary to form that creaminess in the rice. I've got a quarter of an onion now here that I want to dice up. This is about two ounces or 60 grams and I want to dice. So I'm going to cut my slices when I do this rather close together. Flip it 90 degrees, work in the other direction. Okay, and then a fine dice by cutting across. I'm working with a fine dice because I'm not going to be filtering this out or grinding it up. This is going to stay in my rice. And this is the squash that I set aside earlier. I took out some of the squash. And what I want to do is I want to dice this up kind of small. Kind of small. Really small. because I want these little cubes in my rice. I'm going to cook this with my rice. So there is my diced butternut squash. I weighed this, by the way, in case you're wondering how much is there. This, is, this came in at about 3 ounces or 85 grams. I've got a medium saucepan. heating over medium heat, into which I'm going to put my butter. This is a um, couple tablespoons, two or three tablespoons. I'm using clarified butter because it has a higher smoke point. As soon as that's melted, you can use um, pure olive oil if you want. Don't use extra virgin olive oil, it'll burn with high temperatures. This has a, temp, has a smoke point of like 400 some odd degrees clarified butter. And now I'm going to put in my onions. These are my diced onions. I'm going to cook these for oh, maybe four or five minutes, just until they're translucent and tender, maybe even three minutes because they're so small. My onions look good there. I'm going to turn my heat down now quite a bit. I'm going to add my two-thirds of a cup, that's two-thirds of a cup, or 142 grams of arborio rice. And then I'm going to stir in one-quarter cup, 60 milliliters of dry white wine. Bring my heat back up and let that come up to a boil. All right, my rice and onion mixture now has been boiling a little bit and as you can see some of the moisture is already gone. So this is a little of my heated stock. I'm keeping that stock over heat because I don't want to pour cold liquid into my rice. It'll stop cooking. And you just want to work this in a little at a time. And now I can put in my diced butternut squash. And then the way you cook risotto is you keep cooking, stirring, cooking, stirring. And when each addition of liquid is pretty much gone, you add a little bit more liquid, like a half a cup at a time. And this is why you stay with the rice. You stay with it for 15, 20, 25 minutes whatever is necessary to cook that rice and get all the liquid absorbed. So 
you see what I'm doing here. I'm going to stay with this until my rice is cooked. I'm getting down to the very end here. This is my last edition of stock now. I've used all of the two cups and I probably went an additional half a cup, 120 milliliters, to get this far. because the rice wasn't quite done. I like it a little bit al dente, but I want it to be cooked all the way through. So I'm just going to finish this cooking up now until most of this liquid is absorbed, and then my rice will be done. Total cooking time on this is going to be about 25 minutes. Okay, I just turned the heat off under my rice. You can see it's creamy, but it's not wet. That's what I want. I need to adjust for salt and pepper here. So I'm going to put a pinch of salt in there. Grind some pepper in there. And then this is mascarpone cheese. And this is actually my homemade mascarpone. I have on my website and on YouTube. procedure recipe for making mascarpone. Okay, I want to taste that. I've got my infamous red handle tasting spoon here. It goes in my mouth, not the pot. Perfect. Oh, that is so good. All right, I'm ready to start plating. All right, how I would plate this. I put some of my risotto right in the middle of the plate there. This is my squash puree. Put that on the side. Hold a little bit more. That looks wonderful. And then this is my chorizo which I added a little bit of olive oil because I wanted it to look a little bit wet because that'll make it look a little fresher. Always get some on the counter. Okay. And then what I would do with this is kind of just swirl a little bit of that in to kind of give the idea that those two can be mixed together. Forgot to show one thing. There's a bowl of my butternut squash soup. You could, if you wanted to, put a few toasted croutons over the top, or maybe some oyster crackers. Doesn't that look fantastic? Oh, I so want to taste this. I'm going to get some of my risotto with my chorizo. See, those two go perfectly together. Perfectly. And it's spicy, so this should help. Yeah, see, that's sweet. That's mild. That's the squash puree. It offsets the spiciness of the chorizo. Oh, this is so good. <laughs> okay. I've got 45 minutes. My friend is going to be here for dinner. This is what she's going to get. Well, I think she's really coming over for the Bailey's Irish cream. But she's going to get dinner too. So excuse me, I got a mess to clean up here before she gets here. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.